eye on this gold line over here because we don't want him to be sneaking gold over here. We have to keep an eye on this gold line over here, which we haven't yet scouted. So, again, he should have sent a slinger over here to scout out this side of the map. He should also be scouting down here, just in case. There's not a gold mine down there. So, I mean, you can safely assume there's not one there, else he would have built down there rather than up here because that's more safe than here. Um, but regardless, he should still scout just in case. He is moving over to this side, though, and he's not, he's not scouting it. So, quickly, um, before, this is, um, this isn't a bad thing, but it's not a good thing either, right? Anyway. All you have to do is leave one slinger over here. He's not going to make a world of difference. You are ahead in the military. We know that because we did prevent anything from staying, and the big dog from staying up. So, we are ahead at the moment. So, one slinger over here, just to make sure this gold mine doesn't get taken. It's going to be good. It's going to be good for you. Okay. Again, the ISIS player now, look at this, 10 minutes 30. So that's, that's a staple, that's a time marker that we can set for ourselves and say, okay, at 10 minutes and 30 seconds into the game, when we're versing ISIS, the ISIS player needs to take a second gold mine if the starting gold mine is 3,000 gold. So we can say, okay, I need to set up the timing there where I push in and I attack and I force him to use Ancestor's Eclipse at that time. And we'll see what actually happens now and see if he chooses to do so and he doesn't and, and whether he actually knows the timing. Or not. Because imagine right now, imagine if this army pops right here, destroys this location. Okay, he is actually pushing in here, so this is insane. I can't believe that I actually heard to record a game which done this exactly like that one. So there we go, pushing in, Ancestor's Eclipse goes down, we retreat. How easy and simple and clean cut was that? Knowing the timings is so important and just doing it correctly. Having all of these priests is also really good. How many does he have as a standard? He has the five priests and one pharaoh, so that's a pretty nice standard. This is a micro fight here. You don't have to fight it. Like, you can just retreat. It's that easy. You can just retreat from this fight. We'll wait for the ancestors to finish and then come back in and push in for the win. Well, he did choose to fight this arm, and he is doing quite well. So he's not at any way at a disadvantage here. Five fighting that, those ancestors. So... What's going to happen now is, seeing as he hasn't scouted this location, he's not going to be able to push off. And if he did scout this location, he could just move over here and win the game. And he's using that rock to scout this gold mine, so that's really smart there. Um, okay. Again, we have to stop the game now. I'm going to say, as a really smart Rail player, you win the game right now. This is, you've won, okay? You just defeat, you just prevented military from coming out as fast as us. We have prevented Ancestors Eclipse from doing any significant damage and we have control of the map. So technically we should be we should win. But because of scouting, poor scouting, he doesn't know this gold one's here, he won't win at this point in time. So what happens now? We have a hundred supply now. So we have to build this town center and we have to start getting our boom on. We don't want to let um, our opposing ISIS player, who we're so far ahead of economy, economically get back up because of us being silly. Okay, so that's a note that 10 minutes 30, attack, prevent that gold mine. 11 minutes 30, get that town center up because we're doing all right. That is also if we have the supply that he has at the moment, which we should. Into you. Okay, so now we see the ISIS player coming in, going to be trying to take this gold mine. It's going to be a bit of a distraction for um, for Sup, really, because he's not scouting him, he doesn't actually see that this gold mine is being taken, and he believes this is where the ISIS player is moving to now. If he knew the timings, he'd know that that, wasn't, that couldn't be the possibility, because it's 12 minutes, so it's like a minute and a half later and than what the first gold mine expansion would be happening. So... It's just a little, bit, um, a little bit of not knowing the timings as best as as best as you should. As for upgrades, um, at this point in the game we have thrown up our second town center. We really need to start thinking about getting those classical age economic upgrades as well as pierce um what was wait, copper copper shield. Because predominantly you're going to be going up against if we look at the army which he doesn't have, predominantly you're going to be going up against chariot archers. So we're going to continue along and we're just going to see what's going to be happening right about now. So what we have to say is we haven't scouted well, okay? We've missed a gold mine and we haven't won when we should have. How can we now take what we've got in an advantage of military and really punish our opponent? 
we have control of the map. So we have this town set up and we, we, we've only got three town sets. So we don't have any significant advantage town center wise, even with control of the map. So how can we use our military advantage to win? Again, it all comes down to finding this gold line and pushing off. So what he's going to have to do, which he's going to scout now, it looks like he's going to scout now, is he going to, if he scouts it now, what he's going to do is he's actually going to gear up and he's going to try and take out this location right here with a bunch of siege towers and his entire army. He's at an army advantage. So we always have to be thinking about, are we at an army advantage? Can we use that advantage to take out the enemy? So what he's doing now is he's going to be able to spot what is actually happening. He's actually missing the entire region, which is extremely unfortunate, and he's going to be pushing in here. While this isn't bad, it's also not good. Like, all he has to do is scout, and he would be able to know this is the location he should be attacking and not here. He's confident in attacking here because he believes his opponent has no gold mine. It's dumb to believe that, but... Who knows? Anyway. Now he's going to scout the gold mine here. He's going to scout, oh shit, 2,000 gold has been gathered. I'm actually not as far ahead as I thought I was. So he's going to come in and he's going to have to move over to this spot and take it out. So now we know that this is here. We're getting this town center. We're going to throw up maybe two siege workshops and we're going to start pumping out siege as much as we can right into this location and try and take it out. Anyway. Also, the third town center has gone up. Um, a nice rule of thumb to say the third town center go up uh, when we have 130 supply maybe. That's um, a nice way to play it. So we think about it like that. Okay, so what really needs to happen is he needs to pull out of this location and push in here. This is not really a safe Migdol by any stretch of the imagination. It has a massive area to attack over here. So it can get a large surface area of the um, siege towers to push in here. And that looks like what's going to happen here. So here we go, come in, last stage of the game is pushing off gold and winning, so that's what's happening, this gold mine, this gold mine has been prevented from gathering, and sweet gold falls, and basically, we just have to kill off this chariot-based army with our, um, with our army here, and we have one. So we have, um, not only do we have mercenary coming in to the freight to counter his mercenary, we also have the um, army banners we already had from earlier in the game. So all these chariots will fall, especially due to the meat shields of these siege towers. Focusing these chariot archers on the enemy chariot archers is extremely hard. As well as the fact that all these mercenary cavalry are in here and the enemy. ISIS player is no longer gathering gold. If you check him, he should be sitting on... Yes, he's sitting on only 100 gold, so he's not really able to do much in that regard, apart from trade. Which he does do, and he's going to be pumping out a little bit more of these cavalry, just to see if he can hold on for a little bit longer. But, obviously he can't. And at this stage, we have to say, okay, we've got no gold. Let's push in, let's take this town center, and let's convert that um, gold star into an advantage which we are extremely safe with using. Converting a gold star into a third, fourth town center is always going to be a smart move. Especially because now he has to be mining gold from over here, and that's really not going to be enough to um, span out the mercenary to pick off all of these siege towers. And that's obviously going to be the game, so I don't think we need to watch any more of it, but what we need to do, I'll just leave it here, and we'll just watch the massive town center and fall into the might of these two, two, these two siege towers right here. And that it is, there is the game, and Scarlet Airlon 2K has lost this game. Okay, so important to note the stages of this game. There's always, like, um, goals you have to get to. So the first stage of the game was Sphinx plus a couple of priests to push off early hunt. The second stage of the game was delaying the Migdol for that, for, with that Locust for those 25 seconds. The third stage of the game was picking off that Migdol with an Eclipse, preventing it from going up for even longer. The fourth stage of the game should have been, it should have been um, knowing where all the gold mines are and preventing any villagers from getting it and we should have won them but that didn't happen so the fourth stage of the game was let's say we didn't we, we couldn't have pushed off that gold that gold horn because the enemy ISIS plate was actually just too good um, the fourth stage of the game was getting that town center up getting our economy rolling so we can push in later and not losing our military advantage the fifth stage of the game was um, pushing in picking off this gold mine and winning the game converting our military advantage into a actual advantage which is game winning. 
So that's really important there. Converting an advantage you have into an advantage which results in a win, it's always something you want to be thinking about. So what we're going to do now is move into our next game is Ra vs Ramos. We'll see a similar sort of pattern and trying to abuse what we have as an advantage of a god power and advantage of a god in order to um, win a game. So again, our advantage is cheap monuments, right? We don't have prosperity, we can't priest siege like the um, like the ISIS player can, but we can spam myth units. What is Ramos's weakest or any Atlantean's weakest trait? Their heroes. Their heroes is their weakest trait, right? They and also the fact that they can't get free heroes when a god power is going, also their weakest trait. So say we cast clips, they can't make um, they can't make any heroes because they can't use Valor. And things go on like that, right? So what we're gonna note here is again, it is high hunt. We can't do this strategy on low hunt because that's just how it is. There's ways to sort of force it to happen but it's not quite like as in, as natural to um be really lame but like um it's not it just it, it, it seems and feels forced you don't get as many units out you don't have as much resources it's not quite as effective it still might work because your enemy doesn't have high hunt either so it might work but i'm i'm not confident there are other ways to play out this matchup and you can um watch the recorded games at rts sanctuary to find out how to um, actually play this matchup yeah. with low hunt. Okay, so again, this looks like a standard on a high hunt. Four food, two gold um, monument, right? Four food, two gold monument. Looks like he's going to be trying to pop that monument up. Village is going to be dumping in, going to be dumping in, going to have the resources to put it down. Pharaoh is going to be empowering now. We want the extra food income to get this food out, this food villager out. So we're just going to skip through this incredible build order to see what happens here and how it plays out. So now we're constantly producing food, we have six villages on food. Right, that's important to note, six villages on food, two villages on wood, now we're going to put some onto wood. Okay, that's going to be also just to get the pickaxe, going to be getting some slingers out and also getting that um, Sphinx upgrade, which is really important, especially in this matchup, especially when you're pumping Sphinx. Our next one goes up monument for soldiers. Again, we have to be aware we're versing on a Ranos player. Potentially the Ranos player can rush us. He likes to advance at 4 minutes 30. He likes to put early aggression on. We can't advance really late. We have to be aware of what actually happens. So we're only going to throw up two monuments before the temple. We're going to be advancing from class players before we throw up the third, the third monument. I think. I could be wrong. We'll see. <laughs> um, doesn't look like he's yet got the resources to get that pickaxe out. Temple should be thrown down around about now. If he actually is going to choose to do so. And there's the temple that goes down. He's going to empower it. He wants to advance as fast as possible now. Um, this oracle scouting here. Oh, just a quick note here. This is the most beautiful thing I've seen. Well, it's it's not really beautiful, but it was just really, really smart. Like, incredibly smart. Okay. The houses. Look at this. Look at this. Look at how cute this is. I'm gonna come in now and this oracle can just cannot escape, right? He cannot escape. Unless you heroize him to destroy it. One of the one of the um, houses. Oracle cannot get out and it dies. Just really cute. Like holy crap, that's cute. Anyhow, the villager is now sitting on one kill. How nice is that for him? We now have the, the resources to advance. We have advanced a little bit late because our um, build wasn't exactly crisp. That's okay. Going through bars, we're throwing up that third monument. Monument to priests. And what's going to happen when we get class blades? What buildings are we going to throw up and what are we going to attempt to do? So what is the problem? I just want to... What's the problem with a classical fight against Uranus? The problem with a classical fight against Uranus is that you don't have any siege. You can't take out the enemy position because you have no siege, right? How do we correct that problem? Sphinx. I believe three Sphinx with Eclipse will take out a Town Center. That's how strong they are. Five Sphinx without Eclipse, with all their upgrades, take out a Town Center without losing anything. How good is that, right? It's 
spearmen take out the termite extremely easily. The um, slingers take out the termite extremely easily. The 